Hi again. I'd like to continue this parse project here. And, uh, you know, in the last video, we created a little detail area here that displays, you know, the details of a post. So, you know, essentially I have the names of the posts here, and when I click on one, like parse is fun, then, you know, the, the full details of this post show up. You get the title, you get the author, you get the content of the post. And we could show the image here too. I should have done that. Maybe maybe we'll add that in here. You know, or you could do it on your own from the previous video. Um, what I also want to do is I want to add a comment form. Okay, so I want to include, you know, a, a way to comment on this post so people can reply to this. Okay. And so what that will require is that we have a form where you can input your comment and submit it. And then the, um, the form, as it submits the post, it'll have to get the, uh, the object ID for this post and then include that in the form table. Okay. And so let's take a look here. So here's parse. And what I want to do is I want to create a new class okay, or a new table, okay? I keep mix, mixing up the names here because, you know, in, P, in PHP and MySQL, we would call, you know, this class a, a table, right? And so here they call it a class, and then I would call this a record, right? But they call it an object, right? But, you know, so I sometimes mix up those terms, right? But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the same stuff, right? Once you get the idea, you know, it's better if we straighten out what the terminology is, right? So, <clears throat> so we can create our, um, we can create our, our, our classes here in Parse, or we can create them in JavaScript and just have, you know, if we send, you know, if we create a new object in JavaScript and then save it, then parse if that if the class doesn't exist here, parse will create it, right? And we saw that earlier. But you know, for this example, I'm just gonna create the the class here and set it up just to show you what the arrangement is gonna be, like how the how the columns are gonna work out. Okay. So uh, let's add a new class. And this class is gonna be called comment. Okay. And so it'll be a custom class. It's not one of the built-in ones, right? Like user, right? It's, it's one of our own that we make up. And then I'll click create. So now we have the comment class and there's no records yet or no objects in here yet. We'll add those in the future, right? And so, you know, for this table to store something, I want to store, you know, a text comment, but I also want to store the user that posted that comment. And you could add other features here too, like maybe a rating or a tag or something, right? So uh, so let's do that. So right now we just get the default columns of object ID created at, updated at, and ACL, right? So uh, let's add a new column. So I'll click create new column. And maybe we'll call this, you know, content, right? And we'll set the type here to string. So this will just be a text string that you store. And we'll create, click uh, create column, okay. And then uh, I've got the content column here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another one. So I'll click, you know, plus column here. And this column is going to be the user column. So this will tell us which user posted this comment, okay. So uh, we'll set the type here to pointer. Okay, and then it says, you know, from which class? So we're going to choose user. Okay, so it'll be a reference to a user, and we'll click create column. Okay, and then it puts this last column way off to the right. I'm going to drag that guy into view here. Okay, so we can see him. Actually, let me drag him even further over here. There we go, right? So we got content user created at. Okay. And, uh, you know, we don't have to do that. Like I said, if we set up our JavaScript, it'll create these things for us. But I'm just going to do it here so we see clearly that this is going to be a string and user is going to be a pointer to a user object. Okay. So uh, now let's add the form that's going to generate this, right? 
and you could you could do a lot more with this. I'm just trying to keep these simple just to get the ideas of working with parse um, down. So uh, let's go up to here where we have our detail view. Right there's post detail, and maybe inside this div, I'll include a form. I'll give it an ID. And I'll call it post detail form. Okay. And uh, and so this form is where we're going to submit the the comment. Okay. So uh, what we'll do is we'll say um, you know we'll make a let's make a text area. You know so that'll be a multi line input field. And we'll give it the ID of post detail comment okay maybe I should have called this post let's change that let's make that post comment form and make this post comment how about that right and then maybe we'll do um, type input type Submit, and there will be our submit button. We could put an ID on this too. Maybe that's useful for something, right? So we'll say post, comment, submit, okay? So there's our form, right? And I put the, I put the data ID here. You know what I should have done is I should have just put the data ID on the form. I guess I put it here because I hadn't created the form yet. So why don't we do that? I think it might be better if we did the um, the ID here as a as a hidden field. Okay, so we'll give this an an ID. So I'll make another input and we'll give it an ID and we'll say post comment ID. Okay, and then we'll set the type of this input to hidden. Okay. And so, you know, with a hidden field, you it's hidden. You don't see it in the page, but you can put a value in it. So we're not actually showing the value. If you just want to set the value, you can, you know, type the value attribute here and type anything in the in here. But what we'll do is we'll we'll set the value of this to the ID that we used here, and then um, we'll be able to uh, to get that value when we send it to the server, right? So there's our form. Let's do a little bit of work now. Let's put the ID in here, okay? And maybe we'll add the image also. Um, what if I do this, you know? Um, what if I just put the... Uh, maybe I'll put the image tag... Up, I'll put it here, right? Because, you know, posts have an image, so... Let's give this an ID. We'll say uh, ID equals, you know, uh, post detail image, and then the source attribute will be here, and we'll fill that in with parse, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the to the little block of code that sets this post detail area and then kind of set it up to put the ID over here and then maybe write that image into the page. Let's go get that. So let me find, here we are. So it's going to be list posts on click A, okay? And uh, I put the ID in this data ID. I'm going to leave it there. You know, that's not hurting anything, and it might be useful, so we'll leave it there. But let's also say post comment ID, and that's our, that should be our hidden input field. And we'll do dot val, and then we'll put the ID in the value, right? And then if we want to get the image... We'll have to do a little check. So what we'll do is we'll say, hey, you know, if um, let's get the source. Let's do var source equals, 
you know, the empty string. And then we'll say if, and if you recall from our previous discussion of the images, if you, if, if you don't have an image, like a pointer to an image, and we, and we try and check that, like for example, in the post table here, um, I have a bunch of images at the top here, but then some of these say undefined. So if I try to get the, the URL from an undefined, then I get an error, right? So, so we have to make sure that we check before we try and get the URL, right? So we'll just set this to empty. And then here we'll say, hey, if results bracket zero dot get image, right? Because, or actually I put file, let's do file, right? And then, you know, if that exists, then we can say source equals results bracket zero get file and then you know the file actually gives us an object like a parse object with a bunch of data and we want to use the URL method to get the the URL if I recall right and then we can go down here and we can say okay you know why don't we also get the post detail image and then we'll use the attribute property again and to set that image tag to display an image you know we'll just set its source attribute to the value that we put in the source variable up here which hopefully is the file name and if it's not it'll just be blank right so we, we want to do a little more with that, like maybe we want to hide this element if the image isn't there. But for right now, we'll, we'll just stick with this and that'll work. Okay, so there we go, right? And there's our, sub, our, you know, our form. And there we go. So there's our stuff. I think I got some images on some of these down here. Yeah, oh, there's my image, right? So obviously I got to add some styles. I just left that completely out, right? So anyway, so here's our form. And then let's um, let's inspect it and see what it looks like. So there's the form, and what I'm looking for here is the. Oops, I let me do that again. What I'm looking for here is my post detail, right? There's the H1, the small tag, the paragraph tag, the image tag, and then right here is the comment form. So there's post comment form. And then there's our hidden field. Like you don't see it, but it exists there. And when we submit the form, we can get the value from it. And then there's the value, right? That's the ID for this post. And we can see I also added this up here. It's the same ID in the data ID, right? So now we're in pretty good shape. So now we just have to write a function to submit the form and then create a new comment in the database with the user set to this value. Right, and the comment sent to the set to the value that you type into the text area. Okay, so I'll just stop here because you know this is getting pretty long. So, um, so we'll just stop here, and then we'll do do that next step in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching.